Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Kuschel and I would like to introduce my latest project, the 4th deck. The 4th deck is based on a CPU-less computer board that I call the MyForth computer. This computer can be programmed in an old programming language called 4th. Please note that this video is split into two parts. The video starts with an overview of the computer and later on I will go into the details of how the MyForth computer board works and how the discrete CPU is constructed. The Forth programming language was invented in 1969 by Charles Moore. Forth is a stack-based, low-level programming language that follows reverse Polish notation, where operators are placed after their operands. Forth programs consists of a set of so-called words, which can be defined and redefined interactively. The language does not have a traditional compiler, instead it is interpreted or compiled on the fly, making it highly interactive and suitable for small and simple computer systems. With Forth, I found the ideal programming language for my MyForth computer, because it is very efficient, produces small and compact code, allows low-level control of the board's hardware, and has a built-in debugger. But now let's talk about the Forth deck. It has no CPU and no microcontroller. The system is based on 17 logic chips of the 74 CMOS series and 4 additional memory chips. The computer has 32 KB ROM and 32 KB SRAM. Application programs and fourth source code can be stored in two EE prompts. The fourth deck has a big character display and a full-sized keyboard. It provides a serial UART and an I2C interface which are accessible on the rear side. It includes a lithium battery that lasts at least 6 hours. And the whole thing is very portable. It only measures 20 by 12 cm. The fourth deck is made up of two boards, the keyboard and the MyForth computer board. The boards can be connected with a flat cable or stacked on top of each other. The fourth deck's keyboard PCB was sponsored by PCBWay. The fourth deck has a built-in text editor that you can use to write your fourth programs directly on the deck. The fourth dictionary can be extended by binary modules that can be loaded from EEPROM. The M4 float module adds floating point support as shown here. Now I show you how to compile a simple game called 2048. Now I would like to tell you a little bit more about the My Fourth computer board. The computer does not have a CPU or microcontroller. It uses only 16 CMOS logic chips from the 74 high-speed CMOS series. It has 32KB SRAM and 32KB EEPROM memory. There are two optional EEPROMs that can be used to store fourth blocks. The computer does not have an arithmetic logic unit. It has only a single NOR gate that is used for all calculations. The arithmetic logic unit is completely implemented in software. The board is clocked at 8 MHz, but can be clocked at up to 14 MHz with careful selection of components. The software arithmetic logic unit can perform up to 6300 8-bit additions per second when the board is clocked at 8 MHz. 
The board has one UART, one I2C and one parallel GPIO interface. And the size of the board is only 10 by 10 cm. The EEPROM contains the microcode as well as the application code. CPU registers are stored in the SRAM. The UART and the I2C interface are implemented in software and are therefore relatively slow. The UART has a fixed baud rate of 4800 baud. The GPIO connector provides 6 digital inputs and 5 digital outputs for general purpose use. For example, the keyboard and display of the fourth deck are connected to this interface. The board can be powered via a mini USB socket or via heater pins. The power consumption is less than 0.6 watts. And the board is populated with through hole components only, no SMDs. This is the block diagram of the My Fourth computer board. It doesn't matter how closely you look, you won't find a microcontroller here. All functional units are built with simple CMOS gates. You can find them on the board in the positions shown here. In the following chapter, I will explain how My Fourth really works. But first, I would like to tell you about my philosophy and design goals when I started working at My Fourth. First, keep it simple. Focus on the essentials memory, arithmetic logic unit, control logic, and I.O. Second, reduce the number of transistors required, including those in chips, to a minimum. Third, keep the amount of memory required low, because more memory means more transistors. Fourth, only use chips that are still in production. This makes it easy to rebuild the computer, because all parts are available. And fifth, Build something useful. Other people should be able to use the computer without knowing the sampler language. I know there are some computer designs on the internet that are smaller in terms of the number of chips used, but they are either unusable because you have to program them in their own microcode language, or they are limited in their address space, so you have to squeeze your program into 256 bytes or less. I think MyForth is a good compromise between the number of chips used and the usability. And it should be possible to build my design using components that were already available in the 1970s or early 80s. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Here are some important details about my fourth. A micro instruction is 16 bit wide. A microcode instruction cycle has two phases. In the first phase, the 8 bit control word is loaded from the EEPROM into the control word ledge. The control word defines the source and the destination for the following data flow cycle. In the second phase, the transfer of the data takes place. If the EEPROM is the data source, the upper 8 bits of the micro instruction can be used as a constant value, e.g. to address a register in the RAM. Microcode can perform conditional jumps within the range of 128 micro instructions. This makes it possible to construct loops to perform 8-bit operations on the single NOR gate. CPU registers are stored in the RAM, e.g. the PC, SP, accumulator and other registers. This is how the one NOR gate arithmetic logic unit works. My fourth has only one data transfer register for temporary data storage. Only data bit 0 is passed through the single NOR gate. All logic functions that need to combine two data sources are routed through this gate. Additions can be performed by repetitive operation of this NOR gate. Same for AND, OR, XOR, etc. Simple arithmetic logic functions are implemented as lookup tables in the EEPROM. There are tables for incrementing, decrementing, left-right rotating and for zero testing a byte. Here you can see how a 1-bit full adder can be constructed from NOR gates. The predecessor of MyForth, the MyNOR computer, uses this NOR gate-based adder. However, the MyForth computer uses a small lookup table for 1-bit additions to gain a bit more speed. This is an example how MyForth implements bit rotation. It takes three micro-instructions to rotate a byte. First, load data register into temporary register so it can be used as address. Second, load the ID of the lookup table to be used into a register. Third, perform the table lookup and write the result back to the data register. Remember, the execution of a 16-bit wide micro instruction has two phases. 
First phase, fetch the lower 8 bits of a microinstruction into the control word latch. These bits are used in the second phase to define the data source and destination. Second phase, execute the instruction. Move data from any source to any destination. The source can also be the upper 8 bits of the microinstruction. This slide shows the structure of a microinstruction. The first byte contains the bits that define the data source and destination. There is also a bit that enables conditional loading of the microinstruction counter. The second byte is optional. Here is an example of what the microcode looks like. The fragment shown here increments the program counter. As you can see, the microcode is very complex and many clock cycles are required for relatively simple operations. Now I would like to share with you my approach to how I developed the minor computer. So let us build a CPU. First we need a ROM for the microcode. We use an 8-bit counter at A0 to A7 to address the microinstructions. The current opcode is applied to the inputs A8 to A14 of the EEPROM. Because my fourth has two execution phases for each microinstruction, we need a register to store the lower 8 bits of the microinstruction in the first execution phase. This control word defines the data source and sync which is addressed in the second phase. We also need RAM. To be able to address each memory cell of the RAM, we need two registers to hold the memory address. But because we also want to be able to run code from the RAM, we need to connect the address and the data buses together. This also enables random access to the EEPROM through the two address registers. Let's add some more connections. The address registers and the opcode register can be loaded with data from the RAM and from the EEPROM. On my fourth, the microinstruction counter can be loaded with a value coming from the address register. This allows conditional jumps within the microcode without destroying the contents of the data register. Now we add the arithmetic logic unit. The data register is the only register on the data bus that can store temporary values. The data register not only stores the result of the NOR gate operation, but it also serves as a storage for data to be copied from one cell to another cell in RAM. The computer still needs some I.O., which we'll add now. At last, some glue logic needs to be added to tie it all together. Finished. This is the schematic of the MyForth computer. Please go to my website to download a high-resolution image. The MyForth computer is completely open source. On my website you will find everything you need to build your own MyForth computer. Thank you for watching this video.